This is example seven of the differentiation topic. And we are looking at the product rule, which is one of the ways we can differentiate slightly more complex functions. Example four and five deal with actually just the mechanics of using the product rule. This example seven is an application of the product rule. Um, you probably come across a, an earlier level of calculus, finding the equation to the tangent of a slightly more straightforward function, maybe y equals x cubed, where you've used the uh, derivative to find the gradient of the curve at that point, and also you find the point of tangency, and we can find uh, then the equation of the line. Just very quickly to summarize that, for any curve, if you're wanting to find a tangent to a curve at a given point, we are assuming that the gradient of the curve and the tangent are equal at that point. The gradient of the curve is equal to the gradient of the tangent, and so therefore we can find the gradient of the, the curve from our derivative, and we're going to transfer that over to the gradient of the tangent. So two things we're going to work out, gradient of the curve, and also we need to know the point, the actual coordinate points of this uh, point of tangency. So the first thing we're going to work out is the gradient. I'll write that down. The gradient is the rate of change of the curve. In other words, it's to do with the derivative. So my function starts y equals x squared cos. I'm going to put that in brackets to remind us that it's a composite function, cos 2 pi x. And we know from the product rule that the derivative, which I'll call dy by dx here, is defined by this little arrangement or formula, uh, u dash v plus u v dash, or prime u prime v plus u v prime. So we need to work out the derivatives of these two little sections. We need to define that u is the first part of the original function, x squared. And v is the second part. And then we need to find what each of these derivatives is. We know the derivative of x squared is 2x. And the derivative of this trig function, well, let's have a look. It's a, it's a composite function. So we've got an inside function and we've got an outside function. So our normal rule is differentiate the outside function, cos of anything that comes negative sine of that same expression, negative sine of 2 pi x. Because it's a chain rule, we must multiply by the derivative of the term on the inside, and then to differentiate 2 pi x, the x term uh, disappears, it goes to x to the power of 0, which is 1, and you're left with the constant term, which as a value 2 pi. So I can simplify that derivative by saying that it's negative 2 pi sine 2 pi x. So what do we do to put the derivative together? If we go back to the left hand side, we can say that dy by dx is u dash v. And there's u dash and v, so it's going to be 2x multiplied by the cos of 2 pi x. And we're going to add to that u v dash. So we've got x squared multiplied by this term here, negative 2 pi sine 2 pi x. And I can simplify that second term by writing the negative 2 pi. Well, that's just a constant. So it becomes minus 2 pi x squared sine 2 pi x. There we go. That's our derivative in term using the product rule. 
can I simplify that as a common factor? I mean, we're trying to look at ways to um, bring common factors. Because the trig terms have changed from cos to sine, we can't take a common factor there. The only thing that I could really do would be to look at a common factor of 2x and all that. So I will. That gives me... Is that simpler? Well, fractionally. But it's not a big deal. So we're going to use that as our derivative. And what we normally do then in order to find the gradient, we need to know the x coordinate because this rule here tells us the gradient for any given value of x. What do we know about this function? We know that the value of x is 4. So we want the gradient when x equals 4. So we can write down for the gradient x equals 4. So dy by dx. All we need to do is substitute 4 in uh, all along this line. So the first part, 2x becomes 2 times 4 is 8. Uh, our first trig term, 2 pi x becomes 8 pi minus 4 pi multiplied by the sine of 2 pi x becomes the sine of 8 pi. So what can we do to evaluate that? We know that 8 pi is a multiple of 2 pi. In other words, when we're doing a, a quadrant diagram, we think of 0 all the way around to effectively pi is 180 all the way around to 2 pi. 2 pi is actually 360 degrees. It has the same effect as 0. So the cos of 8 pi is effectively 4 revolutions of that. It's the fourth time around that whole uh, cycle, which means that effectively cos 8 pi is exactly the same value as the cos of 0. And we know that cos of 0 is 1. Sine 8 pi, therefore, will have exactly the same value as the sine of 0, which has the value 0. Which means that uh, the gradient at a particular point, and it's not just dy by dx, I'm going to actually use m, uh, is going to be 8 times. Let's try and tidy that up. We've got 1 minus all of that goes to 0. So the gradient is 8, which is the gradient of the curve is 8. So if the gradient of the curve is 8, and then at the point of tangency, the gradient of the tangent is 8. At We have the gradient of the tangent, as we did uh, in, in previous courses where the derivative was a wee bit more simple. Find the derivative, substitute in x, and there you have the gradient of the curve. So that's the first part done. We want, secondly, the actual point, the coordinate point of that tangent. What do we know? We know that x is 4, and we have a function for the y-coordinate, uh, which was given to us as x squared multiplied by the cos of 2 pi x. And substituting in x equals 4, y is equal to 4 squared multiplied by the cos of 8 pi. 4 squared is 16. And we've already discussed the fact that the cos of 8 pi is still the same as cos of 0, which is still 1. Therefore, the y-coordinate is 16. And we can say the point of tangency is 4, 16. So we have a point 
and we have a gradient, which is all the ingredients we need to actually work out the equation of the tangent itself. What do we know? The, the point is 416, and the gradient is 8, which means that we can go straight into writing down the form of the equation of the straight line, y minus b equals m times x minus a, and by substituting in 4 and 16 in the appropriate places, we can work out this. I'm just going to do this quite quickly because it should be fairly straightforward to work out. I am assuming that this part is known. We want to add 16 onto both sides, which is going to give us a, oh, I made a little mistake, and that's what should be 4 there. My apologies. Which gives that to be 32, and then if we add 16 onto both sides, we get 16. So we've got y equals 8. Turn that in y equals 8x minus 16 is the equation of the tangent. I've already written down that heading up above, and there is our solution.